right. Welcome, everybody, to episode three of our primer on detection engineering. Um, I'm Tim Frazier, and today I'm joined by a special guest, Kevin Lowe, who leads our threat research team here at Anvil Logic. Kevin's been working in cybersecurity for over 10 years, including a long stint at one of the largest banks in the world. So he's been doing this at a pretty high level. Kevin, first off, thanks for joining us today. And I wanted to start by asking you to give us some brief insight into what threat research looks like. Do you have a list of sources that you proactively review or do you have, uh, I don't know, inbound feeds that you monitor? Like, how does you just talk us through how your process starts? Yeah, we'll do. Uh, thanks for having me, Tim, and really appreciate the intro. Yeah, so kind of diving into threat research. My process generally starts during the day with like monitoring Twitter, Reddit, uh, Mastodon, kind of social media to kind of get an idea of what's trending. Um, I don't want to get scared by any serious vulnerabilities but also just check out the top articles of the day and seeing what's of interest and if anything, I can report out to the Anthologic community. Okay, so you do have some key sources you go to. Um, you mentioned Twitter, Mastodon, a couple of those things. Are there some top Twitter handles or something that other people can follow if they want to kind of get good sources for this? Um, so I provide them in the uh, link below with um, the description. But yeah, generally, I don't want to butcher their names, but Kevin Beaumont, uh, Will Dorman, um, Mauer Hunters, a lot of great um, researchers in, in the community, very willing to kind of share out what they're seeing, their insights. Um, yeah, a lot of great helpful individuals here that really help, help make the community very um, informative. All right. Yeah, no, we'll definitely do that. We'll put some some of your top Twitter handles to follow in the links below for anybody who's interested so that they can kind of get a start and start to uh, keep track of that. For those of us who um, are not avid Twitter posters, Twitter can be a poor man's RSS feed, right? <laughs> so I, I like to watch Twitter myself. Um, I don't do a lot of posting, but it's it's useful to kind of get a sense for some of the stuff that's out there and new things that come up usually create a Twitter storm. Uh, so yeah. that's good. All right. So let's say when you, when you find an interesting threat or a new threat, series of threats, you know, during your, your review of the social media of things that are happening on the day, kind of what do you do with that information and what are the next steps? How do you process it? Yeah, for sure. Um, so kind of break down the intelligence we gather into two different levels. So strategic, which is more of the informational and um, data breach or um, content that doesn't really have a technical component, but it's always good to know. And then the tactical level, where is the actual um, technical write-up where we can kind of map our analogic use cases to detections to kind of offer up um, our, the community to kind of see what's happening and what kind of defense we have in place for a breach and intrusion like that that was reported. Okay, no, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, strategic stuff to be aware of, kind of think through is is the overall landscape shifting, but then tactical, obviously, um, for those of us who love to get technical with things, we need something we can actively go use, right? So, so there's a, a component to that there. So maybe, I don't know if you could just walk us through um, an example of a recent threat, maybe start from some of the source information you got, maybe a tweet or, you know, an article or something, and then kind of step through your process uh, do you, you know, what do you go search on or do you review for more information? And then kind of what does the result look like that you produce for, um, in this case, for Envelogic customers, but if somebody was doing it internally, I guess they'd be producing it for their own organization. So yeah, just kind of, can you step us through that process with an example? Yeah, for sure. Tim. I'll share my screen right now. Awesome. Um, okay, great. So this first one we start with is a reported uh, CISA article. Um, there's everything CISA uh, reports out has been phenomenal news. They do a great job reporting back to us of um, what they're seeing, um, gathering top TDPs. So this one is for Royal Ransomware um, in their Stop Ransomware series, which is very helpful in mapping all the TDPs for trending ransomware groups. Um, this is not the latest report. The last report was Lockbit uh, 3.0. Um, just want to report on Royal because they were a relatively new threat, um, not a lot of... Um, mappings of content to them. So this one's a very helpful article that was released. And yeah, just stepping through, seeing all, they do a great summary of who they are, why they're important, and just kind of diving deeper into technical details. You see all the um, phishing, remote desktop, the, actual, the key technical indicators that we need to kind of 
help identify what they like to do, um, gather the TTPs, um, appear in the page, right? Don't start at the bottom where just like hashes and things that can quickly change. What do they like to do when they get an, onto a network? So things I mentioned here, like they use RDP to move laterally, um, what they like to install for remote access, um, create an admin account for persistence. So all those things kind of um, see if we have content in our MLogic Armory, I do a search in our um, inventory to see what we have and then kind of build a threat scenario out of it. This is the one I created for Royal. Um, so yeah, just an RDP connection or also remote access and kind of seeing some things that happen afterwards. If there is persistence, um, any system modifications, things like that, um, do we create a threat scenario for? Uh, it doesn't have to be a, we try to make it um, a very viable scenario where it doesn't have to be a very linear approach, rather it be flexible if um, things that are too noisy, um, we create an AND operator. So there's two groups of activity that happen, have to happen here in order for it to trigger. So, you know, RDP and then um, the service being stopped sounds like something admin activity can be done, but if we want to fortify that detection, we can add a second element to it with the more uh, with a the create a new user group or something else to that effect. Nice. All right, hang hang out there for just a second. Let me let me break that down for for a quick. Um, so you take that that report from CISA, right? And you you're looking through it. They've done a great job, like you said, of of really highlighting the techniques, right? Um, where they're not just giving you hashes and IP addresses. And so this we're starting to get these real intelligence reports that actually focus on the techniques, so that we can then turn around and focus our detection strategies on that. And what you've got pulled up here, just because we don't talk about the logic product that much in this uh, series of videos. This is actually a scenario within our product that um, enables a complex search, right? Like, like Kevin was just talking about, based on the threat intelligence, you know, kind of he, he goes through and digests all that information and puts it into this format that really is running a search, right, from a tactical perspective. So that would be, you know, a much more manual process uh, that you would have to go through is to basically figure out, all right, we've got these different techniques. Let me go look and see if I can find those things happening in conjunction with one another. And oftentimes those things, like you said, are very noisy events. Like in that first stage there, I see you've got RDP log on, log off. Oh my goodness. If every time an RDP log on, log off happened, I had to go investigate that as an analyst, I would just go crazy, right? Just, we don't need to do that. But by being able to take those things in conjunction with one another really brings us to, to the next level. So, all right. Keep going. I just wanted to make a pause there. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for summarizing that, Tim, and thanks for informing the audience of a threat scenario. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the main gist of this report. Um, then we can also dive into something a little more different. Um, Cyber Reason, another great um, security company, they do a lot of great reporting as well. So you see a more um, complicated intrusion from Black Basta using Quackbot. So this one also gets something that we can dive deeper into of. Uh, breaking down all the individual components and then kind of replicating that and in, in translating that rather into our analogic threat scenario. So taking mm -hmm. everything that they've exploited, the Felina vulnerability from last year, and then kind of just walking through the reported intrusion um, and creating that flexible scenario where um, we can kind of detect on multiple different facets of the intrusion. Nice. Yeah, that's a pretty complex scenario. Um, that would be something that would be very hard to uh, search for <laughs> on our own. Well, cool. Well, thanks for breaking that down, man. Yeah, this is a really great product that comes out, right? And I think that's that uh, process of taking threat intelligence from words that people have written, or in that case of Cyber Reason article, which was great, a picture that kind of diagrams the, the attack flow and being able to, you know, actually, I think operationalize, I don't know if I've said that already, but that's the word that really comes to mind when we tried to take those words and make it something we can use, right? So um, is this is this the type of thing that you that you did prior to Anvilogic and how what what does the process look differently like when you think about um, some of this stuff doing it with without Anvilogic versus now that you're doing it um, here? Oh, yeah, yeah, this is definitely not something I've done in my prior life. There's more, we always take like the individual indicators. So like just one portion of the intrusion, PowerShell being used. Do we have detection? I, I'm sorry, it came from detection engineering. 
um, background along with forensics. So kind of you see singular elements of the attack. You don't really think you do think about the full intrusion, but that came that comes after in the report. But you see now the full attack chain and just not the specific element of one uh, attack. We mentioned before of RDP. Yeah, like as an analyst, you hated going through and looking at who logged in and where they came from. Uh, you, you do um, augment those detections by saying like, you know, impossible travel logins, things like that. But there's just one part of the smaller story. The threat scenario tells the full story of multiple different um, indicators of bad in your environment to help get you the information faster and make it just doesn't make one indicator uh, all that noisy. All right, man. Well, thanks. Thanks for your time today. Thanks uh, for sharing this insight into what you do and how you do it. And then what product you produce on behalf of Anvilogic's customers. So um, as a closing question, I just wanted to ask, like, now that you've kind of had that background in cyber for over 10 years and, um, you know, now you're doing threat research for somebody out there who says, hey, this seems really interesting. I want to kind of review all this and really learn all this thing. Is there any sort of a career advice or thought you would you would pass on to an aspiring researcher? Oh, no, yeah. Um, so just kind of, uh, I, I hate to say this, but, you know, stay interested and stay up to update with the news. Um, I know that the news give us a lot, but just reading about all these breaches or intrusions really gives you an idea of what you can expect coming to this type of role. And if that interests you, like, you know, dive into different threat groups, uh, ransomware actors, kind of seeing what the threat landscape is like and seeing if you like reporting on the intelligence provided and, like you said, help your organization operation, operationalize the intelligence and make it into something that's actionable for the audience that you're helping to defend. Nice. Awesome, Kevin. Well, again, thanks so much for the time. Appreciate it. And uh, great talking with you today. Look forward to seeing all of you in the audience next time on our next episode, where we'll actually get into building the detections um, and looking for the specific things that Kevin mentioned, the, in, the uh, identifiers that make up the larger scenario. So that will be next time. But thanks for stopping by. Talk to you then. Thanks for having me, Tim.